let's kick off then. Um, my name is Gary Mon, for those of you who don't know me. I'm the chairman of the National Jewish Assembly, and we're having a debate today. I'll just read out to you the wording of the motion. It is, in spite of the massive rise in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK since the Hamas massacre of the 7th of October, this National Jewish Assembly believes that our country's Jewish community nevertheless has a viable long-term future. Uh, and what we're going to do is I've got to, our Vice Chairman Keith Rowe is going to speak first, and he will speak in favour of the motion. And then I'm going to ask Joseph Cohen to speak against the motion. Uh, they being the leading proposer and opposer, they get four minutes. Everybody else gets three minutes. And uh, please put up your hand if you want to speak. That is in the bottom uh, of the screen. You see this raised hand. You'll see against my face. You'll see there's a yellow hand in the corner. Please put up your hands if you want to speak. Okay. Uh, and um, when you start speaking, you'll say, the first thing I want you to do is after saying your name, if you could say whether you're in favour or against the motion and then talk. And uh, I believe we have a clock that will give you three minutes uh, to speak. Then what will happen is when we run out of people speaking or we get to uh, about 10 past one, whichever is the earlier, um, well, I would then ask Joseph Cohen to sum up for the opposition. And finally, I will ask Keith Rowe to sum up for, for the proposition and then we will take a vote. Uh, so that's how we're going to organise it. Um, uh, I'll just tell you that this is our second, I mean, we've had, as you all know, about 40 Zoom speaker meetings by now. We've been going 22 months. Uh, uh, but this is only our second major assembly meeting. The first one we had a year or so ago was on the issue of the Holocaust Memorial uh, near Parliament, um, where we had about 115 people came to that. Uh, and um, we're going to have more, and if anyone's got any ideas or other things to have a debate about, please let us know. So, without further ado, uh, uh, wait, can we please everybody be on mute, please, um, except for the speaker. Without further ado, I'm going to ask Keith Rowe, who is the Vice Chairman of the NGAA and also a former President of Birmingham Hebrew Congregation, to speak for the proposition. Keith. Thank you, Gary. And uh, for giving me the opportunity to uh, open this, our second debate. It is often said that British Jews are proud to be British. Many of us have long histories in this country with relatives having served the crown faithfully in conflicts and in other ways. We all share in the joy when a member of the community is honored with an award. We are a part of the establishment. My children are the sixth generation of my family in the UK since my great-great-grandfather came to England to escape the pogroms and the draft into the Russian army. Britain has been generally a safe place for Jews since before then. I, for one, feel very British alongside my Judaism. <clears throat> this is not to say that there are not problems in our society. There have also been in previous generations as well with Oswald's black shirts just one example of past causes of similar anxiety amongst our families as today's anti-Semites. I do not believe that all is lost, yet at least. I certainly do not want to be as my wife's family was among the last to leave Iraq, barely escaping with their lives. But neither do I think that now is the time to give up on the UK. We have long-standing institutions and governmental influence at all levels. <clears throat> My belief is that the general British non-Muslim population don't know much about us and aren't bothered about us. We certainly do not have a negative effect on their lives. Britain is a very tolerant nation. Politics has many pendulums. And while current sympathies fueled by our biased media, media are certainly with the Gazan point of view minimizing the atrocities caused on the 7th of October, things can change and focus and sympathies will in all probability do so. It may get worse before it gets better, but change it will. I was privileged to have been on the NJA mission to Israel on the 8th of January, and I have seen for myself the total devastation and destruction our enemies are capable of. 
the sponsorship of Israel's and the Jewish people's problems in the Middle East and in much of the world is fueled by Iran. Who knows what will happen with their government or what other atrocities will be carried out at their behest on the UK or its allies, which can change attitudes very rapidly. I am also of the opinion that the current problems are, in a way as never before, brought to the front of our minds by constant media presence in a way that makes us feel under relentless pressure with a constant focus on only the negative. Some people who are brave advocates for our cause against the Hamas loving barbarians put themselves into potential harm's way. As a counter to the other social media, this is great work and shows our side of the issue. But the vitriol and hate that these activists receive and that we can witness on social media is not the general experience of our day-to-day -day lives. If we instead look at our own personal experiences rather than events on the BBC and other channels, some people will surely have had direct experience of anti-Semitism. But is it really affecting our everyday lives and freedom to live in this country? The numbers attending the hate marches, although large in themselves, are a small and unrepresentative part of the population as a whole, comprising of mainly Muslim Hamas sympathizers and the socialist hard left, many totally ignorant of the facts. While it is clear that there are some in the Jewish community who feel that now is the time to leave, there is no real need to do so at this point. All is not yet lost. I do believe in the ingathering of the exiles and that we are witnessing the fulfillment of the prophecy, but we are not yet at the point where we have to leave the UK. In spite of the massive rise in anti-Semitic incidents in the UK since the Hamas massacre on the 7th of October, we nevertheless have a viable future for now at least. And I feel it is safe to assume that everyone who disagrees with me this morning must be currently in the process of making Aliyah. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Keith. And now I call on Joseph Cohen to oppose the motion. Joseph. So as someone who is in disagreement with what you just said, I can confirm that I am indeed making Alia <laughs> in three weeks' time. So um, what I haven't prepared a, a talk um, for today because I thought it would be much wiser to listen to the arguments against what I'm arguing but what I would like to put forward is the idea of looking at history of the UK and making comparisons to what we're experiencing today, I think is a mistake. So Oswald Mosley was mentioned with the British Union of Fascists. Neither the Union movement or the British Union of Fascists ever won elections. What we experienced a few weeks ago in Rochdale is something that should terrify every single Jew in the UK. You see, anti-Zionism and anti-Semitism, or whether anti-Zionism is anti-Semitism, is a discussion that's often had on YouTube, on the street, but it's a purely academic, way theoretical waste of time. Because when anti-Zionism becomes the dominant ideology of a nation, the outcome is anti-Semitic. And I would encourage everybody to look at the Muslim world, the Arab world, to see how that manifests. Prior to anti-Zionism becoming the dominant ideology within many Muslim nations, Jews were numerous. We lived in those lands for centuries, for millennia. And with anti-Zionism taking root, today, you now have more Jews as members of Boreham Wood Synagogue than the entire Arab world combined. And that is the reality of anti-Zionism. And why is that relevant today? That's relevant because George Galloway was elected on an exclusive platform of anti-Zionism. He is the first politician I'm aware of whoever ran an election campaign focused purely on anti-Zionism, op opposition to the Jewish state. He targeted Muslim houses with anti-Zionist messages and won a terrifying 
victory at the polls. And this is the trajectory that the nation is on. I personally have been assaulted numerous times. I've had people pull knives on me. I've had people violently assault me. And there is no escaping the reality of anti-Semitism spiraling out of control in this country. Now, obviously, this isn't 1930s Germany. It's not 1920s Aden. It's, this is we're at the very beginning. But the trajectory is real. Um, the anti the rise in anti-Semitism with each conflict in Israel is increasing. I got into activism in 2014, and I thought, well, before then, but really in a big way in 2014. And I remember campaigning with many of the people on this call back then. And all of us that were campaigning on the streets then will be able to confirm that today, post-October the 7th, it's 10 times worse. I've never had knives pulled on me before. I've never had my local supermarket, my local kosher supermarket. An Islamist walked in with a knife and tried to murder Jews. Now, I'm not sure how much of this we can go into, and I'm not going to name the supermarket because it's an ongoing court case. But he had someone walked into a lo local supermarket with a knife. And it was barely mentioned in the press and this is the terrifying part. the terrifying part in the rise of anti-zionism is that the, the indifference of the of the british public and the, the 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 conversion of what is just street activism online activism into actual electoral campaigns so for me i'm practicing what i preach and i'm leaving while while i believe we still can um but I do think the future for our children and our grandchildren is not positive unless something drastically changes. Thank you very much indeed, Joseph. The next speaker I'm going to call on is Jonathan Hoffman. Um, Jonathan, if you could begin by confirming whether you're in favour or against and then speak. Jonathan. Uh, Jonathan, <laughs> just to let you know that you have three minutes. Um, I'm against the motion. Um, let me just put my timer on. I've got a timer on the screen for you, Jonathan. OK, three minutes. It's right. at the top of the screen. You can see it. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, sure. Um, Britain is going to be a wonderful place for Jewish people. A wonderful place, provided you're not an open supporter of Israel. Because if you're an open supporter of Israel, and we're seeing the signs, there are certain universities which are no go for you. SOAS is one. Queen Mary University is another. Manchester is rapidly becoming. We don't have statistics on uh, Jewish students applying to these universities because you don't have to give your religion when you apply to a university. But we know from anecdotal experience that most Jews are not going to these universities. And it's going to be a wonderful place for if you're in a profession, if you're uh, pro-Israel. You try and find somebody in the humanities uh, in a university, a lecturer or a professor who is openly pro-Israel. You won't find any of them. Because if you're pro-Israel and you're a professor or a lecturer or you want to be in a university, you won't get very far. Your career will be stunted. Um, and um, as far as um, uh, Jewish representative bodies go, the CST, the Board of Deputies, Jewish Leadership Council, they won't tell you what's going on because they have a vested interest in telling you that everything is great. A wonderful place for Jews to live. Of course they have, because that's their business. They're not going to tell you that things are bad. Um, the best people are going, right? The best young people, and we all know them, have gone to Israel. And I know a lot of young people who are going. They're voting with their feet. Uh, some of us are not young anymore. We have uh, different considerations. But, um, and this is under a conservative government, for heaven's sake. Uh, within a year, we're going to have a Labour government. And there are several Labour MPs who are viciously anti-Israel. Uh, and if you read my blog, um, you'll see who they are. Um, this is not a place where a pro-Israel Jew will be happy in future. And OK, if you want to keep your mouth shut about Israel, fine. But Judaism and Israel are two sides of the same coin. And it's about time that the CPS realized that. It's about time the judges realized that. Um, they don't realize it so far. Um, I was assaulted um, what, in uh, 2021 because I stood with an Israel flag. 
we won't stand at these demonstrations now with an Israel flag. It's too dangerous. They've taken away our human rights, our human rights to stand in the street with an Israel flag. Um, I was prosecuted for shouting at an anti-Semite in 2019, prosecuted. And the policeman, of course, was a Muslim. Uh, Muslims now form uh, in 2011 census, they form 4.9% of the population. They hey, now Jonathan, form... Your time is yeah. up now. Yeah, Jonathan, thank, thank you. you very much. What I will do is, if there is a, if there's space, Jonathan, I can call you again later, if you put your hand up again. But now I'm going to call on Dr. Irene Lancaster. Uh, Dr. Lancaster, if you could say whether you're for or against the resolution um, before we start. Yes, like Jonathan, I'm against the motion. Can you hear me? I'm, yes. I'm a Jewish historian. In 2003, I live in Manchester next to Rochdale. In 2003, I was invited to Yad Vashem for an educator's course on the Holocaust, and my daughter had just made Aliyah. To my amazement, Robert Wistrich, the greatest expert on anti-Semitism in the world, who sadly died a few years ago, young, called me to one side and said, you're an academic, you work with the churches, you've worked at Liverpool, you're at Manchester University, you know what it's like. You have to stop being an academic and use your skills to help brave journalists like Melanie Phillips, because England is the most anti-Semitic place in Europe. And his talk was on this subject. I have no idea how he knew about me. We went to this thing at Yad Vashem because our daughter had made Aliyah and it was free and it was very good. So I came back and he told me what the four um, groups were that I had to start dealing with. One was the unions, he said. The next was the left-wing media, especially the BBC. The churches, he said, were dire. And he said, as you know, the universities, which I've just been kicked out of, University College London, he said. So I tried with the universities. I mean, I'd worked at two in this country, at Liverpool and Manchester. Liverpool had been marvellous till the mid-90s when you could see what was happening. Um, and then in Manchester, um, I started the Jewish History Department. About five or six years ago, I was told that they are now teaching in that department, David Irving, as real history, and um, some of the Jewish groups that have been mentioned that are useless tried their best. They asked me to write a letter that they then sent. Nothing happened, and our MPs tried, the mayor of Manchester. They are still teaching him, and he is very proud of it. Then, as uh, Jonathan said, lately Manchester has got a thing um, on the wall saying kikes out. I tried with the churches. Some of the church people weren't too bad, but uh, the Archbishop of York and uh, Canterbury at the moment have said that Jesus was black and also that he was a Palestinian refugee on a media such as the BBC and won't retract. And they tried to stop me in various ways, including contacting my doctor to say that I was mad carrying on. I'm saying this because this is so important. The two gentlemen before me have been attacked and this is what's happened to me. Um, I recently went to Israel like you did, and I've written about it for Christian Today, which I write for, sometimes together with the past um, archbishop. I couldn't deal with the unions, um, but I, now it's the Labour Party. And Rochdale, I taught in. I've written about this. I went to the Manchester Representative Council about how dreadful it was. It wasn't just the Muslims. It was the whites as well against them. And uh, they laughed at me. And now we see, I'm not at all surprised, it's happened in Bradford and now in Rochdale. Okay. Right. And as for the media, Jeremy, uh, Jeremy Bowen, when I lived in Israel, said, Israel has no right to exist to me on the phone and I'm not going to discuss it with you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Irene. OK, next speaker I'm going to call is Martin Cohen. Before I do, just to say that after Martin, I will call Paul and Ruth Hart then Benjamin Tamba, and then Ida Simmons. Martin, please tell us whether you're for or against, and then proceed. Thank you. I'm absolutely against, for, the, for, for many reasons, including lack of official mainstream Jewish leadership, scared of a backlash against, a backlash against Jews if they complain and, and uh, want too much too quickly. Main concern was the far right, too little and little recognition, uh, recognition of more dangerous far-left Jew hate, which allies itself to the anti-Zionist Jew cause. Too little interest in opening and maintaining positive contact with decent, empathic non-Jews who wish to help actively. I fully appreciate all they doing, uh, doing standing with Israel and the Jewish people. Jewish numbers continue to decline, which is also including many far left wing Jews who have no interest whatsoever in Jewish values, customs, history or religion. The church 
passive condemnation of Israel and failure to understand after 2,000 years of persecution, Jewish needs and values, including support of Israel. Massive ongoing Jew-hating Muslim Arab immigration, hate sermons in mosques, Arab news and social media, both online and hard copy. 24-7 practice of slander and, and libel, malicious allegations against Jews and Israel. Impressive professional attitude, however, which is disallowing fact factual criticism of Islam. Forced evacuation of Zionist and Jewish meeting speakers and guests through their threats of violence. Gains in local and national political power detrimental to Jews in particular and national interest generally gaining momentum, frightening momentum in their machinations. The result, Islamophobia controls the following. National governments and local councils, public and civil services, home office history of dehumanizing Jews, foreign office Arabists delegitimizing Israel, aided and abetted by news and social media, they make the news and show utter disregard for Israel or living Jews. The police escort and allow Muslim marches with their far left allies against Israel with cries of slaughter the Jews, and I've heard them, while keeping Jews under control. Slaughter of Jews is as old as Islam itself. The judiciary is unable to prosecute Muslims all too often and allow Jew hate to fester. Failure of this country and other countries to toughen the laws and act decisively to control people who do not share Western values. The result, official fear of accusation, phobia and racism, while all too often allowing uncontrolled Jew hate. Welcome to the future plan, Islamic State, controlled Jewish free British Britannistan. Thank you very much, Martin. Thank Next you. is Paul and Ruth Hart. I don't know which of you is speaking, but whoever is speaking, please tell me whether you're for or against before you start. Gary, uh, Ruth also wants to speak. If <laughs> you that's can okay. both speak. It's yeah. absolutely fine. Yeah, but you have three minutes right, between right. you. I'm, I'm uh, for the motion. I'm staying. I'm not leaving. My uh, grandparents came to this country from the Ukraine after a pogrom where, they, where the, her parents were murdered. This country isn't going to be like the 1930s in, in Germany. And I suffered from anti-Semitism right from the age of 11 at second, secondary school, include having string time ride my nose because all the Jews have got big noses. When I went to college, when I went, started work as well. Anti-Semitism is in this country and will always be in this country, but I refuse to be chased out. Ruth? Oh, you finished. Oh, Ruth. Yeah, yeah so uh, um, I, I think I might possibly be a um, you know, neutralist motion because you know, I, I, I believe that um, everyone is entitled to a home in this country and to have a homeland everywhere else. Every other ethnic and religious minority he, um, yeah, is, is entitled to that. You know, why, why are we Jews the only <laughs> exception? And, and you know, I mean, I agree with my husband, we should not be chased out, but I also believe that um, um, we, we, are, we are entitled um, to have the option of leaving. And it seems that alone of all the minorities is that uh, we're neither welcome here nor there. Okay. Thank you very much, Paul and Ruth. Okay. Have you finished? You've got, you've got a good one. Okay, fine. Next speaker is Be uh, Benjamin Tamba. Benjamin. You're on You're mute, mute Benjamin. Benjamin. You need to come off mute. Benjamin, we can't hear you. You're on mute. Mm. Okay. Well, while Benjamin gets that sorted out, I'll uh, move on. To... Oh, he's oh, finished. Can now we can hear you. Away well, you go, Benjamin. Okay. You fall uh, against the resolution. Uh, UK is a is a is a no, question. Question: Are you for or against the resolution before you start? UK is a pro-Israel, pro-Jewish state. When when you look at the opposite of Scotland Yard, yeah, there's a monument for the Battle of Britain. This is where we said that the entire British Empire said no, not our island, not our empire. Where we took a stand against Hitler, so that he won't come and take our Jews away. That's our stance. It still stands today. 
But the only problem I think Jews are failing to accept is this. The Nazi refugees that, were, that told us that everything was Hitler's fault, everything was Hitler's fault. The anti-Semitism started with Hitler have come into the West and they are the people that they are in the Labour Party, they are in the American liberal agenda, they are the people that are promoting anti-Semitism. And unfortunately, I will say the truth, some Jews are failing to accept this truth. That's why it looks so difficult. The Labour Party is full of Nazis. Where do they come from? They are the Nazi refugees that were able to lie to the world that everything was Hitler's fault. I, I, I wrote an article on, on Instagram and I said, look, anti-Semitism is an is a, is a Islamic problem. It's a Jewish, it's a European Christian's problem. Anytime a Jew is doing well in their generation, they will find a way, head them, take their word from them, and then find a way to blame it on one man. And then it will be okay to go back to normal. Anti-Semitism has been happening for years, almost 2,000 years. They take the word of Jews, and then they say, oh, convert to Christianity or Catholicism. Hitler's idea of anti-Semitism was about Lutheranism. Don't hide that. The West is promoting this whole thing again. The liberal world is pure anti-Jews, anti-Israel. That's why I'm very happy the likes of Netanyahu and Benny Gantt are united. They've seen this in their history that, look, this is, this is an agenda that is produced by European Christians and Muslims, whether you like it or not. I asked a man before, I said, where do you go from a, a group of people that say, oh, we're sorry, we didn't know what we were doing. Hitler made us do it. Where do you go from that people that were accepting that they are very sorry, Jews are going back home to their homeland, to people that are now allowing from the river to the sea to be preached in front of Whitehall? The truth is, they lack God. They envy Jews, it's a fact. Don't, don't hide these things. And I, I encourage all Jewish people to understand in America, in the West, in the Christian world, in the English speaking world, you Jews that live among us, I can't, I can't talk to Jews who don't live in the, Christian, in the Christian or English speaking world. Don't hide these facts that this is a European culture. This is an Islamic culture. The, the, my, my grandfather and the likes of Dr. Sajiku, Dr. Nkwame, they told God I made this truth. And God and actually saw that. But unfortunately, they were removed so that anti-Semitism can go on like an European and Islamic business again. Thank um, you very uh, much, Benjamin. Thank you. Don't trust these Muslims. They will still Thank come back and say, Sorry, we've got to let them. others speak. Okay. The only thing I can advise you all is, no, look, you finish, yourself. UK is your home. Can we make, can you please? UK, America, everyone. Sorry, Benjamin, we've got to let others, are oh, fine, that's right. Okay, uh, I've got one more speaker, Eva Simmons. Please could others put in to speak. Uh, I see Steve Waldman. Um, so, I see Eva Simmons, then Steve Waldman, then Adam Kershaw. And please keep it coming. We've got another hour or so, so plenty of time. Eva, off you go. Okay, so I don't believe there's a future for Jews in the UK. Um, my husband and I have actually made Aliyah. We made Aliyah a couple of years ago. I've been on the streets like Joseph and Jonathan Hoffman for the last 10, 10 plus years. We have seen face to face the hate and the venom in the people's eyes close up. We've seen this coming for years, which is why we, my husband and I have made Aliyah. Currently, we have some displaced people in our house in Israel, which is why we're here. We're also here because my children, my grandchildren are here. So it's very difficult for us to, to completely uproot ourselves to go and live in Israel. My fear is that the Muslim community are campaigning fiercely to infiltrate themselves in every single part of society from governments, to local councils, to the NHS, to, um, to academia, to schools, to teaching their children, to the civil servants. There was an article just yesterday in the Times about the organizations that are trying to persuade people to take time off for mental health when they've seen a picture of a dead baby in Gaza. So they're being encouraged to take days off for their mental health. This is what the Muslim community are trying to do. They are turning everybody against 
Jewish people. I just spoke to two lady practitioners, private practitioners, who have had to remove any identification of their Jewishness mm. from their bios, from any um, literature showing anything that they may be Jewish, they speak Hebrew, anything they have to delete, right? How is that a future for our children and the next generation? For us, okay, we've got a few years, the cycles we've seen historically. I'm saying to my children today, my parents left Egypt with nothing, no money, no nothing, no assets, no nothing. The, the, the Eastern European Jews, the same thing. We've seen this happen over time immemorial. The cycle just goes round and round and round. My children understand it's very difficult for them because they have lives, their kids are at school, for them to uproot themselves. I'm slowly, slowly trying to persuade them. It's difficult. But 15 more seconds, either. Yeah, but just to say, I absolutely do not think there is a future, certainly for our children or, or my grandchildren. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ida. Please keep the request to speak coming in. We've got two more at the moment. Um, Steve Waldman is next. Steve, are you in favour or against the resolution? Um, I don't think there's a future for Jews in the UK. Um, I became more socially conscious over the last few years and uh, and lent more towards the Labour Party. Not and uh, uh, recently with Keir Starmer in charge, um, I thought there were, there were possibilities for the future. Um, I, I uh, went on a um, a, um, a web meeting of the Jewish Labour Group, um, and it was about immigration. And I said that I was torn between agreeing that immigrants should be allowed in after all jews were immigrants and weren't allowed in in the past um and um also i thought uh but i my my dilemma was that most of the immigrants who would be coming in were muslim and were brought up fiercely anti anti-israel and anti-jewish um i was actually poo-pooed at this meeting um and um because obviously the people were were very involved in in, in encouraging immigrants. Um, I actually then left the Jewish Labour Group. Um, I, I had a number of uh, Labour MPs who I supported. Um, I followed on Twitter and I've unfollowed virtually all of them. Um, so it's almost certain that the Labour, group, Labour, Labour government will come in. I don't feel that the Conservatives are all that uh, um, pro-Jewish uh, pro or pro-Israel either. I don't think either of them have got a lot to say, which is why I think it is very unlikely that there is a future for the Jews here. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Steve. Um, Adam, Adam Kershaw. Yep. So I am against the motion. I don't think we have a future here anymore. The reason I point to this is because of what is described as the Red-Green Alliance. This kind of converges between hard left-wing positions and Islamist positions that you see play out on the streets. It's been re it's been referenced before, like how these hate marches that happen every single Saturday, you see references of, and quite frankly, disturbing references of stuff like Kaiba Kaiba Yahud, which is an Arabic chant of, you know, we're going to kill the Jews. But yet the left facilitates and allows this, but I do mean the very hardcore left facilitates and allows this because of this warped perception that they try to push through academia, that you can divide the world into oppressor and oppressed, into darker skinned people oppressed, lighter skinned people oppressors, and they somehow lump the Jews in with this lighter skin oppressor category. And you see this, play out in academia and it's not an immediate thing this has been going on for decades long before i've become a student long before i even reached adulthood this kind of system has been going on and we're seeing it bore out in society now like the amount of students the amount of younger individuals that are buying into the propaganda of groups like hamas of groups like hezbollah the groundwork is being made at an academic level, and unfortunately, academia is where the future of a society is made. And we're seeing these people rise to positions of power where they're saying, 
whether it's media, government saying, well, you know, Israel doesn't have a right to exist, or automatically assuming that any time a conflict starts between Israel and Gaza, Israel is immediately at fault and the Palestinians are immediately like victims. It is becoming more violent. It is becoming more tense on the streets. And this society is shaping itself to become more dangerous. And we need to get out while we can, while the doors are open, because when the doors are shut, that's when the horror really ramps up. Thank you. Thank you very much indeed, Adam. Um, I'll, I'm waiting for more people to request to speak up. Um, I think Jonathan wants to speak again, but before I call on Jonathan, I'll just say a, a few words myself. I'm actually still just about in favour of the, of the resolution. Um, I think that if the situation gets worse, my views will, will change. And I think the decisive factor is the role of government. At the moment, we do not have a situation yet, like we had in Nazi Germany in the 1930s, where the anti-Semitism and Jew hatred was actually driven by government action. We don't yet have that. If that was to ever change, either overtly or covertly, then it would change my mind and make me think about leaving. Um, but I don't think we're there yet. That's my personal view. Um, Jonathan Hoffman, you had your hand up again. Did you want to say anything else? Um, just very quickly. Um... Yeah, I mean, if there were to be peace, if there were to be peace between Israel and the Palestinians, then I think, you know, I think things would change in Britain. Um, but I personally don't think there's going to be peace in my lifetime. I've got maybe another 30 years to go if I'm lucky. Um, so, <laughs> although, although some would wish it was shorter. Um, so, you, you know, that, that, that is a fundamental point that, that if do we think there's there will be peace um i think that is a bearing on whether we what what side of the motion we would be on thanks thank you We've got three more speakers who put in please keep the hands coming up uh jeffrey smith followed by cheryl lee followed by roy homberg jeffrey are you in favor or against the resolution jeffrey you're on mute <laughs> There you are, Jeffrey. Hi. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm in favour of the resolution, but I'm distressed by hearing what Irene Lancaster and Ida Simons have shared and others about, about the present situation. I, I've spoken in eight universities and I've spoken on Islam television and on Newsnight in support of Israel. I was director of Christian Friends of Israel for, for, an, for some time. And quite extraordinarily, we now live um, just an hour's walk from Clipstone in the Midlands, where the parliament in, Oct in October 1290 was actually in session Edward the First Parliament, when the act, when the edict of expulsion of the Jews um, reached its it, it, its its closing date on November the first, twelve ninety, and when two two thousand Jews were expelled from this country, not to return for three hundred and fifty years, and whether you know it or not, the edict of expulsion has never actually been rescinded. Um, I um, chaired a an alliance which sent a petition of 3,355 Christian signatories, which was uh, handed to the Lord Lieutenant of London, and it was graciously received by the Queen in 1999, uh, pleading that this edict was rescinded before the new millennium began. Um, it, I, it, she graciously passed it to the Prime Minister, and he sent gave it to Jack Straw, who was then Home Secretary. I had 
uh, an extraordinary letter from the Home Office um, explaining that um, that it was quite unnecessary to do this because not only did um, domestic legislation make it um, unenforceable now, but we were members of the European Union and we were signatories of the ECHR, both of which had regulations which Ten were seconds, printed. Jeffrey. So um, uh, that's, I'm speaking about it on Tuesday here in Man Mansfield. Thank you very much indeed, Geoffrey. Thank you. Cheryl Lee, then Roy Homburg, then Tom Griffiths, then Roger Waters. Cheryl. You're on mute, Cheryl. Cheryl, you're on mute. Thank you. Um, I don't think it's time to go, to leave the country. And I don't think that we should lose sight of the people that are very much pro-Jewish and very much on our side, like uh, John Mann and... Um, Eric Pickles. The one thing I would say is that I live in Buckinghamshire, so I am not in a Jewish area. But what I have done is I have been to some interfaith meetings. I can't change the world, but I have changed a few people's perception of what we're about. And I would suggest to other people that maybe they should consider going out into a wider world because a lot of people have misconceptions, as we know, about us as Jews. Um, and certainly I've met some people whose minds have been changed by what I've had to say. Thank you very much, Cheryl. Roy Holberg. Uh, thank you. I've been an Israeli citizen since 1967. I'd much prefer to see all of you here in Israel. However, I, I feel this is very much uh, an individual decision. I want to uh, disagree with Jonathan Hoffman on uh, several points. First of all, I, uh, I'm, I'm a professor of medicine, and while in Israel, I was offered a job at Queen Mary University in London. I'm now uh, starting work as an honorary researcher at UCH in London. Everybody knows I'm Israeli. I don't try to hide it in the least. I've never had any animosity at the university level. Everybody knows, as I say, that I'm Israeli, and that's despite the Yorkshire accent. I've never had any problem. And when I finish this job, I'll go back home to Israel. So I can't agree with Jonathan Hoffman, certainly from my own individual uh, experience. Roy, I said, I said humanity. Sorry, Jonathan, let, let Roy finish. If you'd let me finish, I'd be grateful. I've never had any individual animosity, which is why I say the decision to go to Israel is very much individual. I also disagree with Jonathan when he raises the possibility of any peace uh, agreement between the uh, Israelis and the Palestinians, not in my lifetime, and I guess not in the lifetime of many of you here, although I wish you all a very long life. Thank you. Thank you very much. I'm going to call Tom Griffiths and then Roger Walters. But before I do, uh, quite a number of doubles are coming. People who spoke before would like to speak again, which is great but I'm going to give first preference to those who haven't spoken before. So anyone who hasn't spoken before who wants to speak, please could you raise your hands now before Roger Waters has finished? Uh, and if not, then I will start calling uh, those who've spoken before again. So, Tom Griffiths. Yeah, my hope is very much for this motion. Um, I've greatly valued the Jewish people I've known in different areas of life, both in Manchester and in London when I lived there. And I value the contribution to my own life and British life. So, yes, I hope people want to stay here and the Jewish community is as vibrant as it's ever been in the future. It's not for me to say what choice people can make, especially in the, in the light of the increasing threats to individuals and families 
uh, and in threats both in public spaces and in terms of the media and how Jews are perceived. So it's not for me to make that choice, but I hope there is always a future because Britain will be a lot uh, sorrier. Britain will be a big loser if increasing number of Jewish people decide to leave. Uh, I just want to comment on a few things that uh, haven't been mentioned here. Uh, the threats and intimidation, the feeling of um, being got at all the time if you display your Jewish identity is a very real fact for Jewish people I know, especially in universities sometimes. So you want to hide your identity, I have to say. But I have, I have a concern. I'm just going to put some concerns I have. I've got the concerns both within the Jewish world and without the Jewish world in the terms of the critics of bipolar splits that are going to exist. And I can see it happening. You, from the critics, you'll see that we like the good Jews. The good Jews are those who support us. The good Jews are pro-Palestinian solidarity. The good Jews are those who want to be peacemakers. And the bad Jews are those right-wingers over there. So inaccurate, so false but it's a very dangerous one. But even within this meeting, I am concerned. I think one of the great richness has been its diversity of political opinion, its contribution to different areas across right, left, and whatever label you want across different religious identities. I have a concern that Jewish identity and the Israel agenda is seen as very much as a conservative safe land and labor is hostile. I think that's dangerous for you. And I feel it's a need to bring forward the distinct and positive Jewish voices across the political spectrum, if possible, in the future. I may be naive in saying this, but it has been a great achievement of Jewish society in Britain to have re representative voice spectrum. And I hope NGA could be part of that. The final point I want to say is the Jewish, is ordinary British voices who don't actually live in um, popular Jewish areas don't live in North Manchester or certain areas of London. Um, and they don't see Jewish people on a day-to-day -day basis. They're indifferent. So how do you tap into their indifference, which I encapsulate? I don't care what happens in Gaza. I don't care what happens in Israel. 15 seconds, Tom. My family. How do you tap into that indifference and show this agenda is relevant to them? Thank you very much, Tom. Um, Carl Cohn next, and then after Carl Cohn, Janet Gershlik. And Janet, hopefully when you come on, hopefully you'll be able to put your camera on. Carl. Well, you forgot me. Yeah, Carl, you're on now. Are you in favour or against the resolution, Carl? You forgot me, Gary. Oh, Roger. Yeah, I oh, my God. Sorry, let me take Carl. I'll come back to you, Roger. Sorry. My, my apologies. I'm losing it here. Carl, Carl you're on yeah. mute. Carl, you need to... Yes, I'm, I'm uh, full throttle. I'm... Uh, with a big voice, as usual. My heart uh, would say, yes, there is a future for Jews in Britain. Oh, is it? Oh, sorry. Sorry, Trevor, you're oh. right. Please. Carl, carry on. My heart would say there is a future for Jews in Britain. My mind uh, says, unfortunately, no. I'm a hard-bitten realist. I look around and I see... Uh, there is no future. Uh, this is not a Britain I knew when I joined it uh, in the mid uh, 70s. Uh, all we see here, and people are either deluded or in denial. Uh, there is no spontaneous marches or whatever. It's a display of sheer bile and hatred towards Jews from all quarters. We are playing again with, well, the Jews have been forsaken in Britain. I said that a long time ago, despite all the platitudes of uh, uh, all the, the great and the good. They do not matter. Numerically, we are insignificant. The Jewish community, so-called community in Britain, can hardly fill three old Trafford stadiums. Uh, we What we see here, uh, and again, I, I, uh, I'm very disturbed when people use uh, this uh, uh, genteel uh, uh, form of Islamism. There is no such thing as Islamism. As Bill, Bill Clinton used to say, it's Islam stupid. There is no Islamism. There is like, there is no Christianism or Judaismism. It's Islam pure and simple, and, and it's insulting to Muslims' intelligence 
to tell them that it's another version. So when we see these uh, marches of violent hate, it makes the mythological battle of Cable Street uh, a, a fantasy. Jews in those days in the 30s, Oswald Mosley and so on, did not feel threatened. Synagogues were not attacked. Jews and Jewish schools were not attacked. The reality has changed beyond recognition. The demographic reality of Britain is uh, uh, here uh, to stay. It's irreversible. Uh, the mosques and the madrasas are centers of incitement, of indoctrination, of hatred. We simply do not relate to the reality. 15 seconds Islam, now. Islam does not allow any compromise. Thank you very much, Carl. Roger Walters, and Roger, my apologies for missing you earlier. Roger. You're, you're on mute, Roger. Mute. I should be on mute now. Okay, Roger, you're in favor yes. of this resolution. Well, it's difficult for me to make that choice. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm 75. I've lived a great life in this country. I think I might survive this hate for another 10 or so years. I'm more concerned about my children and my grandchildren, and I can't talk for them. I think, the, judging by what was just said, I think probably is a limited time period for the Jews here because of the universities, the education system. Having said that, I don't agree with what was said because we, we've all had a fantastic life in this country. We've been accepted by this country for the last hundred years. Um, and we've all made, uh, I think we've all made a decent um, fist of, of integrating as well as keeping our Jewishness. I wanted to share with you an article by John, Joshua Hoffman. In, um, he wrote this week in his uh, blog, which is called... Um, I can't remember what he calls it now, but basically the, the, it was called Where Are All the Jewish Gangsters? Now, in case you haven't read this, and I don't know if I've got five, if it lasts more than five minutes, you'll find it on The Future of Jewish. That's his blog. And he basically says, Where are the Jewish gangsters? I'm talking about confident, courageous, burly groups of Jews who can put these mobsters in their place. Uh, you know, my father was um, in the Jewish Lads Brigade and he beat up, you know, the Mosley black shirts in the 30s uh, and 40s. And, um, you know, I, I don't know whether it's going to come to this, you know, it's gonna, but maybe it will. There are some burly Jewish kids around forming little vigilante groups. And I'm not saying that I agree with violence, but I think that it may be come to that, that we have to do it. But he talks about, you know, muscular Judaism refers to the cultivation of mental and physical properties such as strength, agility, and discipline. Um, whereas, you know, the, the perception of Jews is that we're kind of learned people of the book. You know, we're quite weak. We don't stand up and have a punch up um, reg regular. But I think we might have to, um, you know, transform to deep, deep chested, sturdy, sharp eyed Jews that would vanquish negative perception of ourselves. A guy called Nordau argued that mental and physical strength would be an imposing response to Jewish distress in anti-Semitism infested Europe. Um, that's all I really got to say on that particular matter. I, I do find that my non-Jewish circle of people that I mix with are generally ignorant of, you know, even yesterday I had to tell people what was going on in Gaza. Seconds, Roger. They don't know what's going on in Gaza. Your average Gentile hasn't got a clue, does not interested, and it's only a very small people, maybe two or three hundred thousand, that we are up against. It's not a huge Thank amount. You. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you. Okay, um, Janet Gershley next. Um, and uh, if anyone who hasn't spoken before wants to speak, please put up your hand. Uh, if, if I don't see any further hands coming up, I'll start calling those who've spoken before again. Janet, if possible, could you come off mute and put your camera on, if possible? Hello, Janet. Where are you? Hello, Janet. I can see you're off mute. Janet, hello, can you hear us? Okay, well, in the absence of Janet being able to say anything, um, 
I'm going to ask Paul and Ruth Hart to speak again. Oh, no, we've got another. No, sorry. Sandra Wick has come forward. Sandra. Sandra, can you hear us? Can you hear me? Yes, Sandra, we can hear you. Right. I'm, can I'm you, just going to. Can you turn your camera on if possible? Or is it not? Is it a problem? Camera. <laughs> well done. Great. Lovely Hello. to see you. Hi, Sandra. <laughs> Off you go. Hello. Um, okay, so I don't know if I'm for or against, that's why I'm listening. Um, but I do have some very strong views about things. Um, I've been listening to Douglas Murray, who I think really is a grown up and needs, you know, is it really somebody worth listening to? And my feeling is that from now on, Parliament really should stop being televised and should be private. I think um, we're showing weakness in this country. British people are showing weakness in this country. Um, uh, you know, when, when the speaker, when it all fell apart in Parliament recently, um, it was... Sorry, the voice of... Sandra, we've lost you. Sandra, you've gone on mute. Could you come off mute again? OK, How, can you hear me? Yeah, got Where as far as the get... Speaker in Parliament and then we lost you. So last couple yeah, of Yeah, the sentences. Speaker in Parliament, it all fell apart and everybody could see it. And I think that's when the bad guys, whoever they are, see a weakness and can come in. Whatever, whatever, you know, I think that we need to, in this country, draw up the drawbridge, batten down the hatches, get our country in order. We need some order in this country and the police don't know what they're doing the met is in a big they're just standing around they don't know what they should or shouldn't do and i don't know who to talk to about this but i do feel strongly i've written to douglas murray because i know he's he's got a good voice but actually i feel that as a country now I, i'm jewish obviously i'm a jew but as a country we're losing our grip here and we're going in, in, in and, our, and it will become an Islamic country that I think there'll be caliphates. I think it's all happening while we in plain sight. That's what I have to say. Sandra, thank you very much. Now, Janet Gershlik, can, can you now hear us? Janet, give you another chance. Janet, you're on mute. OK, well, we'll wait for Janet to come. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to ask Paul and Ruth Hart to come in again. And also, before Paul and Ruth speak, can I just say, uh, anyone else wants to speak, please come forward. Don't be shy. The more the merrier. Don't be shy. Right, Paul and Ruth, you're next. Good morning. I've probably got caught um, on, on the back foot, but yeah, you know, just to make myself clear, um, you know, you know, it appears to me that the anti Semites they don't want us to stay here, but they also you know uh, deny you know our, our, our entitlement you know to go to a place where we will be welcome. Um, I mean, I'm inclined to agree with Gary and with Cheryl that it, you know the, the time to go may not be yet, but you know we, we should be grateful that we do have somewhere to go uh, you know I, I also think that although I don't remember an anti-semitic prime minister of, of either party um, you know for many many years I think perhaps Edward Heath was the last one every foreign minister which, whichever um, your party is in power you know had even the, the ones that you didn't think were an anti-semite for example David Cameron they all seem to be turned as soon as they reached the foreign office Okay, thank you very much. David Schwartz, you haven't spoken before. David, would you like to speak? You're on mute. David? No? Okay, uh, in which case the next person to speak, I can't see any new further new names, the next person to speak will be Dr Irene Lancaster, then Benjamin Tamba. Thanks, thanks very much, thanks very much. The um, motion is not whether we feel comfortable here at the moment if we're over 70 like me, but the future. And I think it's interesting that the two people that looked to be the youngest, you know, are either going or have gone. 
I just want to say a couple of more points and thanks to everybody else who spoke. It's nice to see Tom, who's a member of my dialogue group with the church, as I still do. I'm very comfortable here if I'm in a bubble, but I know that my children are in Israel. If they were still here, I couldn't possibly allow them to go to university. And I've spoken to the Haredi community. I live in a Haredi community and that's come up and Chabad. They all say to me, and they've just said it this morning because I rang them up before this, that there is no future here and that they're glad that five out of their eight children are living in Israel and they're hoping to go as well. I'm not speaking for the Haredi community. I'm speaking to all my friends, most of whom in Greater Manchester are Haredi or at least Hardal, because there's also Ofsted. It's not just the Muslims. There's Ofsted that's coming from all sides. Now, I just want to say something a bit positive, though. Um, Douglas Murray, who has been brought up, has gone round to the English speaking world. He's a hero in Israel. L recently in Australia and Canada on Zooms, he has very politely in Jewish groups said, when asked, I really think you should think about leaving because there is no future, especially in South Africa and in Canada. He's not telling people what to do. He is saying Israel is the most amazing place with the youngsters, the, the, the most marvellous people. And that's what I found when I was there. The, the, the sort of optimism of youngsters that don't seem to have the same mental health problems, apart from anything else that, that some youngsters have here. Max Nordo, by the way, was a friend of Herzl. He came up and I think he termed the phrase Tel Aviv because of his translation of a book. He, he coined the phrase for the town. But I got on Thursday, on Friday, just before Shabbat, from Lord Moore, Charles Moore, in the House of Lords, former editor of the Telegraph, Sunday Telegraph and Spectator, whose book on Mrs. Thatcher, in my opinion, is the best biography that I've read and I've, I've you know, in the last 20 years in English. And he said, I can understand why you might feel that there is no future for the Jewish community in this country, and I am determined to prove you wrong. That was Charles Moore, you know, who has been this great editor. He's now in the House of Lords. What a Coffee. pity. He's now in the House I'm of Lords. still listening to it. <laughs> Sorry. And, Sorry. Please, 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 I've got that program on, so I'll go down, so, yeah? Sorry, Patricia, please, could you go on mute for some reason? Okay, so I just on. want to say I just want to say about Charles Moore actually wrote to me, you know, he must be terribly busy to say, I can imagine that you would want to leave because I wrote to him about Lord Balfour because on Spectator TV, he was saying all that Lord Balfour had done. And I know a lot about Balfour here in Manchester. He was an MP and met Weizmann in the Piccadilly Hotel. I'm not going to bore you. Actually, it's very interesting. He said, and I feel this now, your leadership is no good for the Jews. You are a new type of Jew, and I wish there was more like you. And as you know, he built the uh, uh, stone for the, the Hebrew University in 1925. So basically, you, Gary, are the future, as far as, 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 far as I'm concerned with institutions. So. The Board of Deputies, I don't even want to say what I think, because they'll probably sue me. The Jewish Leadership Council, CST, absolutely right what other people said. I didn't want to get into this. I'm just a, a teacher. I love teaching Hebrew, Jewish history, medieval Jewish thought, that sort of thing. And Robert Wistrich, why on earth would he ask me to get involved? Because he said they haven't got backbone. You've got backbone. You're northern. You can do it. And it's, you know, it's cost me probably a uh, lot okay. of years. But I agree all right. with all those people that are younger that are either are in Israel or are going. Okay. I'm not saying okay. nobody can say. Thank you very much. Your is out. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Uh, I'm going to call Gail Marcus now because she hasn't spoken before. And then I'm going to call Benjamin uh, Benjamin Tamba after that. Gail, would you like to uh, speak? You're on mute. Gail, you're on mute. Yeah. I, I'm not sure if I've got my thoughts together very well. But first of all, I want to say I'm South African and the chief rabbi of South Africa is not telling us to leave South Africa because most of the people in South Africa do not support the government's actions and attitudes on Israel. There's a huge amount of solidarity for the Jews there. And not only is our government taking Israel to court and then rushing back to court every two minutes, there's allegations, uh, which I better not repeat, about why they're doing it because they've not been verified, but um, it's it's quite horrendous. But now they're also saying that any South African Jew who serves in the IDF, when they come back to South Africa, will be arrested and they, their citizenship will be taken away. And they're also saying that, um, that those Jews who have dual citizenship 
with Israeli, which you get automatically because it's an automatic right. You don't have to apply because you can't automatically have dual citizenship in South Africa, but it's perfectly legal to have it. They are going to have their South African citizenship removed, which I think is absolutely outrageous. So, you know, we've got different problems. There's far more anti-Semitism here. Apparently, according to the chief rabbi, South Africa still has one of the lowest amounts of anti-Semitism in the world. Um, over, well, well, he's going by the facts, not by people's perceptions. There is some horrific anti-Semitism, but it's not the majority of the people. But over here, there's a, there, there's like these waves, and it's all over the world. It's just absolutely horrendous. What the seventh of October was a huge coup for Hamas in that way, and they're claiming it as a victory because they have got these people around the world chanting their slogans, which is what they actually were saying. They were, their leader was on Channel 4 in an interview, and that's what he said. But I don't think we can just give up and say, oh, well, you know, we've got to get out of this country. We were thrown out before. We came back. We're still here. What's it, 500 years now, I think. You know, I don't think we can just give up any more than people gave up when the Mosleyites were marching. And as one of the previous speakers said, my brother keeps telling me, it's a minority who think like this. It's not the, the majority of people either not interested, they don't know, they don't even want to know. They're not all joining in with this hatred. It's just that empty barrels have take, make the most sound. And those are the ones we're hearing. Thank you very, very much, um, uh, Benjamin. And then I think I saw uh, Stuart, sorry, I, I... Yes, he's there, Stuart Palmer. So Benjamin now, and then uh, Stuart Palmer after Benjamin. Benjamin. Everybody here? Everybody here? Yes, yes, we, we can. can hear you. Very simple. South Africa in the passport. I'm on a cage. Can I feel it? Hear your passport. I can't. From Gaza to Mexico. We're having trouble hearing you, Benjamin. Is there some dis? When you were on earlier, it was fine, but now we're having trouble hearing you. Hello. Sorry, Ben, there's a problem. You're on there. mute, Ben. On mute. Now. Can I ask for your passport back? It, it takes a You it keep passing in and out, Benjamin. Is there can a you problem with your mic? Can, you, can we let someone else speak while you get sorted out there? Because you're not quite, I can't really hear you. Stuart, do you want to speak? Stuart Palmer. Yeah, thank you. Can you hear me okay? Yes. Good. Uh, I live in Israel. We've been here since 1981 as a complete family. So I had 40 odd years in Britain and now 40 odd years plus here in Israel. Uh, I take a little bit of exception to the fact that some people to think it's only the youngsters that are making Aliyah. Uh, we live in a uh, residential retirement community not far from Jerusalem. And I can tell you there's quite a number of people joining our community by making Aliyah directly into this residential community. I have a major network, mailing network, since retiring for over 20 years now, I've been in contact with many thousands of people in 20 different countries around the world. Mm -hmm. And I just feel that in many cases, in many cases, people have got their heads in the sand because when we challenge the situation that uh, we feel is happening, we just get the answer, well, you don't live here, you don't know really what goes on. I have family still in the UK and we are in uh, direct contact, so regular contact and the mailings that go out are received by many people, uh, thankfully with uh, information which is accurate and is educating the ignorant. I would like to think that in the UK, people really sit up and take note, as I mentioned on the chat line, there needs to be more Winston Churchills and less of the Chamberlains at government level. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, so, uh, um, Benjamin, are you now able to speak with, uh, we can hear you. You're on mute, Benjamin. I can't hear you. Okay, fine, you're off mute. Can we hear you? Can you hear me? Just about. Yeah, listen. All these threats from South Africa and all these nations are just empty barrel threats. Jewish people have history all over America, all over South Africa, Africa, in UK, long before this legislative. When you go back to South Africa and they want to rebuke your passport, you can 
stand and go to court and get it back. They are just looking for attention. These people have been paid by Iran. They've been paid by the Islamic world to keep voicing out these empty voices. The entire British media is controlled by the Islamic uh, world. We know that. That doesn't mean you should corner yourself and forget about it. You have the right to voice yourself out. Let them know you are playing stupid and you're not going to play along their game. The, the British Parliament is full of that stupidity. It is a fact. It, it, there's nothing Jewish about cornering yourself and saying, well, they said this would us a big threat. No, take a stand against it. Call them stupidity if you see stupidity. If a British citizen was in Gaza, the, uh, the, the, royal, uh, the, uh, the royal Air Force, whatever, would go into Gaza to rescue them. What's the difference between that and what Netanyahu and Benny Gantt are doing? They do the same thing. People are just looking for attention. Like South Africa, for example. They are looking for attention so that the world will hear that they are, oh, we, 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 were, we were listening to when the problem about Jews and Palestinians were, was aired. That's what they are looking for. Nothing comes out of your mouth that makes sense. The hostages have to be rescued. It's a fact. And all Jews in UK stand on that principle. You are not doing anything wrong. If you see an anti-Semite recording, call the police and take your take a stand and defend yourself. This is this is a UK. This is Jewish state. Our ancestors have a monument right in front of Scotland Yard to show that in UK you don't do that to Jews here. So so stop listening to the, the likes of George Galloway, John Cogan, and Sika. They are paid to talk trash. They are paid to talk trash, and everybody is beginning to know that. Anyway. They are paid to talk to us. Thank you. Thank you, Benjamin. Adam Kershaw, and then uh, you've got your hand up, Adam, and then Martin Cohen, you've got your hand up again. So um, Adam and then Martin, and I'm still going to give priority to anyone who hasn't spoken before who wants to speak, but I don't see by the second anyone. So Adam and then Martin. Thank you again. Um, one thing that we've heard brought up numerous times, and it is a correct point to bring up, is that these marches aren't the majority of the population. And again, that is a true fact. However, I can draw a line going back from this point. It's not like a clear direct line, but I can go back through different events in history. The Fahud, unfortunately, the rise of the Nazi party themselves. The I can go all the way back to the Rhineland massacres of like medieval Europe. These were sparked by minority like a minority of the population, but they still wrought untold damage to the Jewish communities that they inflicted their terror upon. So it is correct, and we do need to keep in mind that these marches do have a minority of people, and this position of like pro Hamas, pro Houthi is still a minority. But if the majority remains silent or remains completely indifferent to it, the same cycle is just going to play out over and over again. And we shouldn't have to try to wait for this inevitable cycle or even suspect that this cycle is going to be inevitable. If we can adopt the ideas of muscular Judaism of standing up for ourselves, we should adopt it. But again, we shouldn't wait till the doors are finally closing to get out if we need to get out. Sometimes it's better to get out and save our lives than stay and fight for principle and pay for it with our lives. Thank you very much. Linda Jones, would you like to speak now? Because I've just seen you haven't spoken before. No, I, I am I am a, a Jewish messianic. So I just want to quote something that's all right from... The book of Jeremiah, um, the book of Jeremiah 16. I love the prophets. I believe they're true. And it, 16, 16 says, behold, I will send for many fishers, saith the Lord, and they shall fish them. And after I will send for many hunters and they shall hunt them from every mountain and from every hill and out of the holes of the rocks. So there we have the word, The you know, the the, the whole foundation. And I think uh, I'm very much, you know, for for the Jews to go. And I think maybe it's kind of safe at the moment. You know, I have been, I have walked through the margin, the margin, you know, the ends of some of the Palestinian marches. And, 
you would, you know, you would never, ever say you were Jewish. You would never, ever say that. You know, you can smile at the people you can, but you would never. It's very scary. Even in churches, it's very scary to open up your mouth. And I do open up my mouth quite a lot. But I just think it, it may be that we have to take heed and we and these things can happen suddenly. So we need to be prepared. That's all I can say. Thank Amen. you, Linda. Um, uh, I just want to say to everyone, those who haven't spoken, you're welcome to speak just for 10 or 15 seconds if you don't really want to make a three minute speech. Just say anything that you like that you think is relevant. Do put your hand up. Um, Martin Curry. Yeah, thank you, Gary. Just very quickly anyway. Um, the Holocaust finished, yet in 1948, when Israel was going to become the state, all those countries invaded, five Arab countries, and the world stood by waiting for another Holocaust. 1967, it was the same again. The world stood by waiting for another Holocaust. I was in Israel during 1973, and I remember again, the world stood by with all the promises were worthless um i remember the galaxies flying over with all the aid not one country in europe showing their true historical complexes about jews would even allow those planes to fly over european territory portugal allowed the american uh, galaxies to come in at the azores to refuel on their way to israel that gives you an idea of the hatred and the disdain that Europe traditionally has for Jews, including the UK. Um, and it's continuing today. There was another Holocaust. If there was, good forbid, a, a real Holocaust with greater numbers, and this was bad enough in October, the world would stand by again. It wouldn't care less. We are, so far as they are concerned, Jewish blood is cheap blood. We have to get realistic and realise what we're up against. Um, also, there is a need for this, there's a need for education, both to Jews and non-Jews, and there's very little. I understand from a very dear friend who went to J3, JW3, who went to the museum, and there was virtually nothing there at all. Why? What, what's the point of having a museum if there's not much to show? And also, this country is allowing terrorists to come in, obtain council properties, yet they were barring Jewish extremists from entering because they're taking revenge on the Arabs coming into Judea and Samaria, shooting Jewish people dead, whether it's guns or cars or anything. That shows you even what this government's about. It's the Home Office which is running everything, the police, the lot, and that one is absolutely faulty to the core. So that's all I wanted to say. Thank you, Gail. Martin, thank you. Gail, uh, you've got your hand up again. Uh, Gail, then Carl, then I think Linda speaking again, and then Ida. No, Linda, yeah. Well, anyway, Gail now, Gail Marcus. You're on mute, Gail. I think I just didn't put it off from last time because I didn't actually have anything to say. Um, oh, right. oh, my I mean, I do, oh, yeah. I do agree that there is a problem with those who keep silent, you know. But I think that's another reason we need to speak up and and contradict all the untruths that the the revision of history that's going on. I mean, I've tried phoning into LBC because the while most of the presenters have been fairly good, the people who phone in and are often not corrected, and you know, it's just horrendous. Thank there's you, there's like a whole list of yeah. things they're saying, like the 75 years of occupation of Gaza, and now it's gone to 100 years. And, you know, there's, there's just these things they keep repeating as if it's fact, and war crimes, and, you know, without any knowledge of law whatsoever. It's just, it needs to be uh, contested. Indeed. Rosalind Shogar, you haven't spoken before. Rosalind. Hi, you're on mute. Hello. Um, Hello. In the 1990s, I took uh, photographs of every individual at a, a pro-Palestinian demonstration in Trafalgar Square for the CST. The chants were nuke Blair, nuke Bush, take over 10 Downing Street. 
nobody listened, like nobody listened or understood what was in the Hamas charter, that when they say they want to wipe out Israel and kill every Jew, that's what they mean. Um, but nobody listened, nobody in the Jewish world, nobody in the non-Jewish world, the politicians ignored it, and so it's gone on. Uh, and I don't really understand this. I don't understand why people don't see that the Arab culture is so very different from our culture, from how we've been brought up. And that just because somebody like Abbas wears a suit and a shirt and a tie doesn't mean ideologically or culturally he and his followers think like him. What is it about the West that they cannot get a grasp on? There are different cultures right across the world and everybody has a different view on the world. That's number one. But number two, I don't think it's just about do we as Jews have a future in Great Britain? I don't think that the British people, the British people who keep to British values, even those who are immigrants and who have uh, came here as refugees, I don't think they have a future. By the time I'm 100 years old, statistically, I understand, over 55% of the Great Britain population will be Muslim. And then we will have Sharia law everywhere. We may have a caliphate. I don't, there's, don't think there's a future here, and maybe not in Europe, for any of us, not just Jews. Thank you, Rosalind. Um, uh, just to tell everyone that uh, we will stop the debate at 10 past one. Anybody who hasn't spoken, you will get first preference. But in the meanwhile, I'm going to ask Carl to speak again. Carl. Thank you again. Uh, it's a privilege to be allowed for an encore. Uh, I would like first to acknowledge what one of the previous contributors uh, said about Charles Moore, Lord Moore, or, or Baron Moore of Etchingham. I'm privileged to consider myself a good friend. We are in touch uh, constantly. And I received similar assurances from this wonderful man, one of the very few great Gentile friends of Jews in Israel. There are quite a few, and I call them like Turner, Richard Kemp, uh, Douglas Murray, and a few distinguished uh, Gentile voices, and Iranians and Indians. And he assured me when I expressed to him, uh, again, the, the fears, whether there is any future for our community in Britain, immediately, instantly, in spite of his uh, many commitments and, and heavy schedule, he, he told me, Carl, do not worry. Uh, there are people like us, Gentiles, who, who are mindful of the Jewish community, and we will do everything to defend you. That's very nice, and I value, I'm touched. However, looking around, the reality is very stark and very gloomy. Uh, and uh, someone mentioned earlier about culture, whatever. Islam is not a religion. We, we should internalize it. Islam is an ideology, a brutal medieval ideology. We should stop calling it fancy name Islamism. There is no such thing as Islam. There are no other versions. Islam has never undergone a reform uh, like Christianity. And it is uh, written, it's in the Quran, and we insult Muslims' intelligence if we interpret for them just like the head of the Metropolitan Police telling us what real jihad is. And when policemen in London uh, or police people are tearing down uh, the images of kidnapped Jews, they wouldn't do that to a lost dog image there. And this is the stark reality. And we, we should uh, internalize it and not dream about it and not ascribe to people who are not sharing our values and assume it's this moral narcissism. We assume if they look like us, they must share our values. They do not, and we better face reality. I'm grateful for this podium and for, for this forum, and I wish all of the Jewish community the very best, that beware of the reality. Thank you, Carl. Ada Simmons. Ida, you're on mute. Ida, you're on mute. Okay. 
I'm here. Great. Okay, I just wanted just before the session ends, just to make a couple of recommendations to everybody here on the group. The first thing is, I would suggest that everyone starts the Alia process. It doesn't mean you have to go. But get your ducks in a row, get the paperwork ready, because it is a bit painful, I have to say, having done it. Um, and it does take time. And even if you do it, there is no commitment to actually go. But maybe just think about it. Start the process. Just just get going. The other thing I'd like to say is there's a lot of people on this group, which is on this Zoom, which is fantastic. If every single person wrote to their MP, went online, as the lady said, tried calling into LBC. I literally write to my MP almost every day. It's bloody time consuming, but it has to be done. I BCC my friends, right? So they can use my letter and they can literally copy it and send it to their MP because they tend to be in a different area. So because all the MPs and everybody we speak to say to us, they don't hear from the Jewish community, right? So it's simple, write an email, BCC your friends, as many as you like, and just say to them, send it to your MP, simple. Um, also get online, speak to people as other people have said, this is what we do and this is how we can try and get our voice across, but please don't sit there idly. There's a lot of very active people on this group. So please, please, do that. Anyway, thank you very much. And well done, NJA, for putting this on. It's been a, a great discussion. Thank you. Thank, thank Edith, you Edith. Please remain with us because we'll be launching a poll at the end of the Yes, the please the don't debate. let anyone leave oh, if fine, you can okay. possibly help it. You'll be having a chance. So what I'm going to do now uh, is uh, I'm going uh, uh, to ask uh, Joseph Cohen to uh, wind up for the opposition, so to speak. And then I'm going to ask Keith Rowe to wind up with the proposition, and then we will have a vote. Um, so, uh, Joseph, say three minutes, up to three minutes, Joseph. Keith, up to three minutes, and then we'll have the vote. Okay, so Joseph, over to you. Okay, so it's kind of ironic. Many of the people on the call, and I, re I realise there's a number of Christians here, so I'm probably preaching to the choir here may not be aware of how the Jewish community came to be in the United Kingdom. The Jews were, uh, although they were, the, although they were never, really, never officially admitted, they were welcomed into the country through the petition of Christians, Protestants, um, like the Cartwright petition, theologians like Thomas Brightman, who believed that Jews needed to live not just in the United Kingdom, but also in the Holy Land. And we were admitted as an incredible petition, which was written to say that we need to allow the Jews in the United Kingdom so that they can return to Israel on ships and take it from the Turks, which would have been the Ottomans. And so Christian Zionism brought us to this land. And it's incredibly ironic how the tables have turned, that the very thing that could drive us from this country and is certainly driving my family from this country is anti-Zionism or anti-Semitism masquerading as anti-Zionism. Now, this threat is not coming from one community. There's been a huge focus on Islamic anti-Semitism, which is very real. It's something I challenge on a daily basis. Um, I have confronted ISIS fighters. I've confronted Hezbollah. I've confronted people who, to the, at this very moment, are in jail on terror charges. So I understand the severity of this threat, but it's also coming from the left. It's coming from academia, from the universities, from the churches. Tragically today, the churches uh, are, are contributing to this um, atmosphere of intolerance of Britain's Jewish community. It's coming from the media. It is still coming from the far right. There is still an act. I've debated the biggest neo-Nazis in the UK. They're still here. And so it's coming from all angles. There is no, there is no community where we are completely safe. And one of the most harrowing aspects of all of this is the police's inability to police. I posted a tweet not so long ago of a Muslim carrying the black standard 
which is the 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 the, the flag which the caliphate well, which the armies of the caliphate carry when they're going into battle he was screaming oh allah curse the jews he was screaming islamic state and the police responded under my tweet this is not the flag of isis we've consulted our flag expert and this is just the shahada it's just a declaration of faith so it's not just that the anti-Semitism is out of control. It's that it's no longer, it, we are no longer able to police it. It's in the mosques, it's in the marches. And Gary mentioned that we don't yet have a government that's anti-Semitic. But why wait? The writing is on the wall. We are the most blessed of generations because today we have a place of refuge which our ancestors didn't. We don't need to wait for an anti-Semitic government. We can leave today and walk in the footsteps of our fathers under the security of a Jewish military, a Jewish defense force. Thank you. Thank you very much, Joseph. So over to you, Keith. Please, everybody, stay online. Um, there'll be a vote after Keith has finished. Keith. Thank you, Gary. And thank you, Joseph, and every other uh, contributor as well who's spoken for uh, and against the motion. There is absolutely no doubt that there are problems being faced in this country, and I wouldn't minimise the anti-Semitism and the Muslim hatred that we're seeing, or a lot of what Joseph's just said in his uh, particular rounding up. The question is, do we go at this point, or do we stay, at least for now, and try and face the real uh, threats that are facing us uh, in this country. So I'd like to just pick up on a couple of points that people made. Uh, Carl Kahn said that all parts of society are against us, and I fundamentally don't think that's true. We have a lot of Christian friends, we have a lot of other friends, and we have um, a lot of indifference by probably the majority of this country. And I agree that we need to work on those that are indifferent and tackle those that are against us. But I think that the numbers that are specifically against us are, as I said in my opening speech, mainly the, uh, the Muslims and the uh, hard left. And I think we just have to, to battle against those. Um, Roy Hornberg drew on his personal experiences and said a lot of what I said in that he hadn't actually personally experienced this uh, restriction on, on his work. And I would like to pull up also on, a couple of people made this point, Adam Kershaw and Jonathan Hoffman talked about the universities. SOAS was mentioned, which is coincidentally the home of the Jewish Music Institute. Um, and I also had dealings with Birmingham University recently which has the largest Jewish po uh, student population in the country. They recently had a well-publicized Muslim demo there. And as part of my role on West Midlands Friends of Israel, I went and visited the vice chancellor who was appalled at what had happened. This was an unauthorized uh, occasion. They've changed their processes to deal with it. And last week only, there was a Holocaust uh, education uh, caravan on that campus which I visited wearing my bring them home baseball cap they would they've had I asked the lady running it they've had absolutely no uh problem at all it is a minority making uh, so much of this noise and that is something we've got to be careful not to over exaggerate the problems that we face and I agree with Gary that should there be governmental restrictions placed on the Jewish community that would be a different ball game altogether but the fact that there are a lot of Islamist and hard left hardliners doesn't mean that we have to up sticks we still have many friends and i think we should look on the world as being a positive place and i would also just to finish uh, agree very much with the speaker a couple of speakers ago who said right to your mps uh, i've had dealings with a number of mps uh, on various different forums they don't get enough representation representation from the Jewish community. So please do write to your MP and complain and do this regularly. Uh, but thank you for taking part in the debate. And I hope not everybody's going to leave the UK just yet. And I wish Joseph well in his Aliyah very shortly. Thank you. Thank you. Right, over to Steve, our Managing Director, to lead on conducting the poll. 
Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if you can just bear with us for a couple of seconds whilst we launch the poll, thank you. Joel, over to you. Ladies and gents, just bear with us. Joel is just busy launching the poll. Um, the poll is launched, it's up. Okay. Right, so what do we do? We we vote, uh, we click on... Can everyone see it? Yes. Okay. Can see it, but where do you vote? So click you in the little circle the... and then click submit. There are three options to click there's, on. There's three options. Um, Gary, as a co-host, I don't think you can vote. Ah, right. That is right. right. That's absolutely fine. Don't worry. <laughs> I, I can't see anything to vote. Sorry. You have on your screen, is there a future produced in the UK? And at the bottom it says submit. No. Sorry. Did anyone people... else not see it? I saw it and I voted, and now it's disappeared. So I don't know. Well, it would it would disappear after you vote. Yeah. Oh, really? Yeah. So yeah. I, voted, it was showing it how many people had voted, but it's not showing anything now. The, the results will be shown, Rosalind. I, where am I supposed to go? It says switch there camera. There was a screen. There was a screen with three statements. Oh, I mean, and I, on I, the I didn't bottom get it. right. There was a blue box with the word submit. Yeah, Sue so is correct. And I once you've submitted, you won't see it again, and we have to wait. Uh, Steve, should we give everybody another 30 seconds or so? If yeah. you're in chat or somewhere else when they start the poll, then you miss it. You don't see it, unfortunately. Okay. You're... Okay. Got it. Has everybody voted who is is got a screen in front of them to vote on? Yes. In which case, Steve, are you in a position to give us the result? Actually, maybe you can put you can show the result on the screen. So only eighty five have filled it out, and we've got one hundred and two people. Okay. Okay. So if anyone else can still see the polling screen on your screens? Please do vote. Um, I've now put up the results. We've we reached ninety percent out of a uh, hundred people, and I've um, okay. shared the results on the screen now. So it's slightly thirty percent in favour of of the resolution that there is a future here. Forty three percent, twenty seven percent undecided. Very. But can I just at this point thank everybody for participating, whether you spoke or not. I think it's been a, a, a very interesting and fulfilling debate. Um, and I uh, look with regard to the NGA, it's the second one we've had. We hope to have others in the near future. Can I also just tell us tell you about our next two meetings? Um, the dates will be on the website, but we're going to have Joe Bryan, a former Labour MP, who now runs a pro-Israel group called Elnet, uh, speaking in the first week of April. And we're going to have from Jerusalem, um, speaking to us via Zoom, Amir Ohana, who is the uh, Speaker of the Knesset, uh, one of the prominent Likud uh, government ministers. Uh, those are our next two meetings, um, and uh, you will hear more from us soon. On this point, uh, thank you all very, very much for attending, and have a lovely rest of the day. Thank you.